So, Lord, we just thank you so much for today, for the beautiful weather, the fall weather, the family gathered around here to hear your word. So, Lord, we just open our eyes, open our ears to hear what you have for us, Father, and just drive it home to our hearts where it'll take root. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, here's my background. Like every other sermon, I'm going to start with my background, Hawaii. I, uh, why, why we have a sermon. And so I was charged and asked by the pastor of the church that I attend to to lead a, a adult Bible study group in the morning. And he said, I'd like you to lead it on your identity in Christ. What is your identity in Christ? And so I said, okay, great. I can do that. Sure. And so I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, What's my identity in Christ? What's my identity look like? Who am I? And then that had just been, so I think he asked me at the beginning of the month, and the lesson I was going to give is at the end of the month. And so I just started asking the Lord, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? You know, who am I to you? Who am I to Christ, the Holy Spirit, and all this? And so when you, when and this, this is a, it's a very common like phrase passed around. It's like, what is your identity in Christ? This is your identity in Christ. That is your identity in Christ. And, and so if I ask you guys, you know, what's your identity in Christ? You could give me and list me off some things. And so as I was thinking that, I go, what do I, what do I see myself in Christ? And, and then, and so... And is it a biblical view? Can I back it up biblically? And so I have two kind of verses. I have two verses um, <clears throat> that basically kind of sum up what I'm looking at. And so it's the first one is Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. And then the next one is John 15, 15. So Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 say this. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And so, my identity, that what I see myself in Christ, is I see myself as a sinner, as a sinner saved by grace. And usually that's how I look at myself. When I'm looking at Christ, and when I'm looking at my relationship with Christ, I see dominantly sinner with an asterisk followed at the end of the bottom of the page that says saved by grace so i am predominantly just seeing myself at, in my identity as christ as sinner and, and so i go ooh that's that's a tough kind of pessimistic view of who i am in christ and so then the next one is John 15, 15. And so these aren't very <clears throat> novel um, verses, and we've heard all these things, but, but I'll get to it, and they, they take a different turn for me as I was asking. So I'll start in verse 11, and it says, These things I may have spoken to you, and this is Christ, that my joy may remain in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. And this is where we, I want you to focus. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends for all things that I heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain, that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you these things I command you, that you love one another. And so I see myself as both servant and I see myself as friend. And so those are kind of the, the main when, I, when I'm dealing in my relationship, when I'm focusing on my relationship with Christ and, and with God and the Holy Spirit, 
those are kind of the main points that I focus on, that I'm a sinner, that I'm a servant, that I can also be a friend. You know, and, and I could say son, you know, and, and those sort of things. And uh, yes, there's many other identities in Christ. But, it, what, but I'm, the question was, what is my identity in Christ? And I think I have such a sinful, pessimistic outlook at times that I can't know my identity. The best way to know my identity in Christ is to ask God, right? He knows me best. He knows Christ best. Christ knows me best. So who am I in Christ? God, who am I in Christ? Jesus. And, and so he, he led me to this thing and he, and he gave me this, this revelation. And so we'll go to if, back to Ephesians 2 and we'll hit verse uh, 10. Ephesians 2 verse 10 says this, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And then Genesis 1, 26 through 27. Genesis 1, 26 through 27 says this, Then God said, Let us make man in our image. According to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And then another, another fairly familiar one in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And so what am I? So I had asked, who am I? and what I see myself, and what am I? And the fact is, is I am both fearfully and wonderfully made. This, these, these three different selections, I am my work, I am a, his workmanship. And then from the very beginning, you know, I was created in his image, and I am a temple. And so I was talking with Tony and saying, you, you know, the temple, the Jewish temple, was built by human hands, given, after schematics were given by God, built by human hands to house a living God temporarily on earth. Human hands. But yet, here we are, and, and this is where the kind of the revelation started to come to fruition, is that we were built by God's own hands, from the beginning of time, you know, obviously he says he knew us before the beginning of time, before we were in our mother's wombs. He knew us and planned to form us, created in his image, in God's image. God created something that looks like him to be a temple where he resides. Handmade, not by human hands, by fallible hands that die, like that, that sin, but by perfect hands. He formed us, created us, built us specifically for the purpose of being his temple on earth. So that just puts like a, a, a light on who I am and just how, how much purpose went into me. And so as I'm, as I'm thinking about this and, and that he created me, like perfectly molded me, my spirit and wh who I am to perfectly house him and the spirit, the Lord opened up the next few verses to say basically this, 
that my identity in Christ is inseparable from Christ. Inseparable from Christ. If you, if you remember, I went back and I said, this is how I see myself. I see myself as a sinner, as a servant, as a friend. All those are by proxy around Christ, but they are not in Christ. They are separate from Christ. I am my own thing connected to Christ. But in these verses, and I'm going to show you, we can go to, go to Galatians 20, or excuse me, Galatians 2 verse 20. And it says this, Galatians 2 verse 20 says this, for, though I, for I through the law died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It is Christ that lives in me. Christ lives in me. Obviously, I am the temple. He lives in me. He dwells in me. Romans 8, 9 through 10. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Are you getting it? In, 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 in. I am inseparable because they reside in me. I was perfectly built to house the spirit of God. That was the purpose from eons ago, from millennia ago, from the conception of creation the purpose was always to have the spirit of God reside in me not that I'm important but it was God's perfect plan and his desire to dwell with me to make it truthful that he would never leave me nor forsake me Keep your place in Romans 8, but we're going to go to John 14, 23. John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him he does he who does not love me does not keep my words and the words and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me we will make our home with him and then back to romans 8 35 through 39 who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is nothing that can separate us. So if there's nothing that can separate us, that means I am inseparable from Christ and my relationship with Christ and my identity with Christ. And I am the perfect vessel, the planned vessel to house the Spirit of God. 
through Christ's righteousness. Not my own, because this temple's more, this body's more a temple to uh, Twix and Reese's Cups and soda. But God designed me, handmade me, created me in His image to perfectly provide a house, a body, a vessel to carry the righteousness of Christ in this world. And because there is nothing that can separate us, I mean, in those three verses, four verses, that encompasses everything. There's no asterisk saying, oh, God, God says, oh, crap, I forgot this. Let me add this. No, that basically encompasses everything. So the only thing, the only person that could separate us from God is God, and he's not one to do that. So there is nothing. So if there is nothing to separate me, I am inseparable from Christ. And you go, well, that's well and good. You know, and, and this, like I said, this isn't a novel idea, but it does bring to the forefront of my mind that I mistakenly in my mentality of saying this is who I am in Christ didn't realize that the only identity I need to know about my identity in Christ is that I am inseparable from him it's not oh I'm a pastor in Christ or I'm an evangelist in Christ a worshiper no I am in Christ period Christ is in me period that's it. That's the only identity I need to know. That's the only identity that I don't even have to search for. Because I was perfectly made to be perfectly what he desired, to perfectly house the righteousness of God. Because I wasn't created with human hands. And so all this excitement, knowing that I am inseparable from Christ. What are the benefits of being inseparable from Christ? And there's a lot. <laughs> a lot of benefits by not separating myself from Christ. By not isolating myself and going, me plus Christ equals in Christ. No, it's, it's Tyler Christ. Like, Christ Tyler. Like, one word. <laughs> inseparable. There's no space, there's no pause, there's no but. It's one and the same. And so if you go to 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. <clears throat> All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. The fact that I am inseparable from Christ means that I am complete. I don't need anything else. I don't need to go searching more, for more Christ, for more Holy Spirit, for more God. I don't need to go searching for opportunities to learn. I am inseparable from Christ. I am complete with the presence and the righteousness and the word of God. Complete. Again, no asterisk saying, oh wait, forgot this. Complete. The end. Period. Amen. End sermon. <laughs> Click. So I am complete. I don't need to go searching for more because it's already within me because Christ is in me. I am his, he is mine, the end. Inseparable. But if, if being complete isn't enough for you, wait, there's more. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me Bless his holy name. Oh, wait. God's within me. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And forget not all his benefits. 
who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with love and kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful, gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in mercy. He will always stri- he will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dwelt with us according to our si- dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame and he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it and it is gone and its place remembers it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children, to such as keep his commandment, covenant, and to those who remember his commandments to do them. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you his angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you hosts, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in the places of, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O my soul. So just to recap, forgives all your iniquities. Heals all your diseases, redeems your life from destruction, crowns you with loving kindness, tender mercies, feeds you, restores your youth, executes righteousness and justice on your behalf, has makes his ways known, makes his acts known, is merciful, gracious, slow down anger and abounding in mercy. Doesn't keep his anger from you forever. Doesn't deal with me according to my own sins or punish me according to my iniquities. He has mercy towards me. He's moved my sins as far as the east is from the west. He pities me, remembers me. All these things are because I I get them immediately. I am complete because I am inseparable from him. I am inseparable from Christ. And so all those things that David lists in Psalm 103 are the things that I have access to, that I am blessed with. There is no, oh, let me put turn the key. They are immediately available to me. They are already happening to me because of Christ and that he dwells in me. I'm complete because I am inseparable from who Christ is and who God is. That's all I need to know. That's all I needed to know. There's no longer any questions. If somebody asks me now, what's your identity in Christ? Who are you in Christ? I'm inseparable from Christ. There's no gaps in that space. I was perfectly made to fit and house him from the beginning of time. God knew. And so when I accepted Christ, every member of who I am, every shape, every cell, everything is inseparable from Christ. There's no lag. You know, I don't need better internet to connect faster to God because you can't connect faster when you are one. You're already one. Inseparable means I got to be one. I'm not separate. I'm one with Christ in me who lives in me. Not a dead thing. A living thing lives in me, is with me. I am in him. He is in me. The end. No separation of body and church. No separation of body and God. 
So everything I need, everything I have, everything I will ha needed, will need, desire, is already being poured out on me. All the mercy I need is already coming. All the mercy, the grace, the strength, the courage, it is all already being poured out on me because it is manifest in the person of Christ who dwells within me and has now claimed me as his own and now makes me inseparable from God. And so as I learn this, as I'm learning this lesson that I am inseparable from God, my, I was talking with my mom and she was just having a low day with this cancer and being sick with pneumonia. And she goes, I don't know. I don't feel God. Where is he? I used to feel him when he was so close when I was struggling with through the cancer treatments. But now that I have pneumonia and I'm just sitting on here, where is God? I don't feel him. What do I have to do? What do I have to do? Do I have to go to Bible study even though I can't make it off the couch? And I had to say, Mom, Mom, nothing. That's what I'm learning. Nothing. If you have accepted Christ, you are inseparable. He is here. He's here in you, with you, giving you the mercy and the grace and the strength to get through this. He's with you never leaving nor forsaking you. You are inseparable. This sickness isn't separating you from Christ. Because you can't be. You can't be. So any screw-ups that I have had, any screw-ups that I will do, will not separate me from Christ. And all those benefits that I listed are so worthy. I'm so complete in it because he is in me. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And he is in me, residing in me. There's nothing that this world can offer me to make me more complete because that defeats the purpose of the word complete. You're not complete if you need something else. So the riches of heaven, the riches of his mercy, of his grace, of his love, of his fellowship, are immediately available to me, inseparable from me, cannot be taken away. Cannot be taken away. And so when you fully internalize that, that gives you power over the things of this world, over the mentalities that you've given, is that, I, you know, if I'm not here in Christ, it's not because I'm separated from him. There's nothing blocking me. I am with God. He is with me. So what is my identity in Christ? It's not what I can do. It's not what I can bring to the table or bring to the church or the talents or the relationships. It's none of that. My identity with Christ, your identity with Christ, if you have accepted him, is inseparable from Christ. When God sees you, he sees Christ. Not you and Christ, together, you are one, inseparable. He is inseparable from you. And to me, that's the best thing. That's, that's really easy to remember in the next question if somebody asks me, what's your identity? That's the easiest answer, the easiest thing to remember. And it is so comforting that I am a handmade vessel made to house the Spirit of God and to be inseparable. Because even though this spot where, where, the, where God resides in this body, it can be destroyed. But not where the Spirit resides because he, only God is the one that can destroy the Spirit. 
So I am inseparable from the creator of the universe. Made specifically to not be separable from Christ. So stop striving to be better this, better that, to please, to, to make your identity more strong, stronger, more worthy. The fact is you are inseparable. You are complete. The end. End sermon. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the revelations and your faithfulness in all of them. And I just thank you so much that I, as, as you were revealing it to me, I just saw your hands molding us, molding and shaping the human body to house you in a way that is inseparable from, from you and from your mercies that are listed in Psalm 103. Thank you that I am complete in you. Because that takes a load off of my shoulders and my back and pressure that the church would put on myself, but more importantly, that I would put on myself to be better because I am complete in you. So thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.